and my last higher education meeting of 2022. I want to call on uh, Senator Hickman to have our invocation. Yeah, let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is at a time like this, Heavenly Father, when we, when we need you the most. Lord, we are just, um, so many times we feel like our boat is lo loaded with water, Heavenly Father, and you always provide us with the buckets to um, empty it out, and we, we're looking for your guidance again. Lord, just always help us to represent the great people of Georgia and help us to honor you in all that we say and do. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to welcome some special guests we have this afternoon, my daughter Rebecca and three of her four children. Uh, Mary, James, and Elizabeth are with us, and I want to introduce to you the Lost Mountain String Band. They're going to play one song for you. It's, it's very seldom you get entertainment in the Higher Education Committee meeting. If y'all will, come on up and get to the front of the room, and y'all go ahead and play. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, man, thank you. Thank you. I've seen them on Facebook, I think. Y'all can, can stand right here and sing. Oh, wow. How cool. Oh, James, man. you want to tell them what you're going to play? Yeah, we're going to do Bow them Cabbage Down. Bow them Might be right. Oh, Y'all see now why I didn't run for re-election. <laughs> First bill on our agenda today is House Bill 435. We uh, discussed this bill and or had this bill presented in our last uh, meeting. We have one minor uh, tweak we want to make to it, and I want to ask Legislative Council if you would address the changes that were made in the bill. Okay. Christy, if you would. Sure. Okay, I'm Direct looking. us to the line and the change that was made. Okay. I'm looking at LC 50-0402-S. And... 50-0402-S. And the change that was made is on line 90. I have inserted after program uh, the sentence that reads, such evaluation shall include, but shall not be limited to, the total number of grants dispersed, the total dollar amount of grants dispersed, the total number of grants dispersed per qualified institution, and the total dollar amount of grants dispersed per qualified institution. And the reason we put that in is to track uh, this data so we could compare it uh, between the institutions on the frequency of the drawdown on this, also compare it to the, the percentage of 
those that are receiving the grant and the average amount of grant by institution. So I think that uh, would put some uh, measure and control into it. Uh, I will say this, this bill is uh, on line 39 subject to appropriations and also on line 42. This is a, a total of $2,500 grant. It's a lifetime grant per student. This is not per semester. Uh, just to clarify that, these are the only uh, changes that were made in the original bill. I want to call on uh, Chairman, if you would speak to the bill. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and first, if I can uh, address the change. Sir, I think that's an improvement to the measure. I think you, uh, um, th that's what we're after. We're, we want to uh, look at this. Uh, and make sure it's working and, and that language that reporting language will help us but uh, to remind the committee and, and um, I'll be brief and, and answer questions what we're seeking to do here is for students eligible students that have completed at least 80 percent toward their uh, coursework their degree or certification help them across the finish line that uh, with a maximum as, as the chairman said of twenty five hundred dollars uh, lifetime but that could be uh, less uh, our uh, indication is to move uh, $10,000 from the student access loan program make that available in this budget year uh, we have to do that in the conference committee uh, that's meeting now and uh, we'll help you know at least 4,000 students uh, complete their degrees with this reporting uh, addition uh, that will give us some information to make decisions on its sunsets and uh, I think 2025 so we'll have good good information on which to make a decision do, have any, do we have any questions from the committee I think we have reached the appropriate time. I'll entertain a motion. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the bill, raise your hand. The bill passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Chairman. I was just raising my hand and, and, and support. Them, so. <laughs> Thank you very I much. I thought you had a question. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Senator, um, we're going to miss you. If I can just have a moment of presence, we're, we're going to miss you down here. Uh, but I just saw three good reasons to spend a little more time at home. And uh, I, I wish you uh, a great success and, and a lot of time listening to some good music. You're very kind. One of my colleagues told me a while ago that on the last day they were going to sing, Thank God and Greyhound, He's Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Have a little country song. All right. Second bill we want to hear today is uh, House Bill 291, Representative Dempsey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. It was a treat to hear your grandchildren, and it does make a great deal more sense as to why you want to be home. I hope that next time they're performing, we'll see you performing with them as well. <laughs> you, you don't hope for that. <laughs> I think that would be a really sweet thing. So um, last year, y'all passed this measure. It made it through rules. It made it to the floor. And on the last day, it did not come out um, with a large number of bills, I think, that the House sent over. So what this basically will address is that this year now, because of the pandemic, because of the nursing fatigue, and because of the great amount of financial gain that many of our nurses can also achieve if they are leaving our state and going other places as well right now we have a true nurse nursing shortage i think if you check in every hospital right now across the state they are very creatively trying to find ways to have nurse extenders and people from ems and all sorts of places just to take care of the very necessary capacity so even more than than we talked about it last year this will address the health care workforce shortage in Georgia um, and you know and help our nurses have just a little bit of help as they try to uh, achieve a degree the intent is that through a narrow and targeted amendment to the tuition equalization grant program that they would have that opportunity that they do not have today 34 colleges do but Chamberlain does not and they have proven themselves I think well deserving of that opportunity Okay, any questions? I will again ask uh, Legislative Council if you would uh, address the changes that were made to this uh, bill. And I'll say this, this was a, uh, and we're working off of LC 50398S. Uh, 
this bill uh, came from a joint working group of the Appropriations Committee and also policy in attempting to craft uh, the uh, tuition equalization grants toward uh, those areas in Georgia where we have the highest needs of, or have the highest number of jobs that are unfilled in the market. Uh, if you would go over the changes that were made, please. Sure. So again, we're looking at LC 500398S. And you have with you uh, a sheet that speaks to some of the amendments that were made to this version from the prior version that's in your folder, which was LC 490472S. Um, there was a substitute in between LC 490472S. Okay. Um, so the bill we're working off now is LC 500398S. In your folder, there is a prior version that is LC 490472S. Um, and I think there was a substitute that is not in your folder that came between these two bills. Okay, so I will try to address the differences in between LC 490472S and LC 500398S. You'll notice that in section one, the whereas clauses were changed slightly. Um, to include not only nursing, but also STEM fields. Do you have any questions on the bill? No. <laughs> okay, and then on line 65, after the word percent, I have inserted nationwide and for each location of such institution located in Georgia on line 65. So there I inserted nationwide and for each location of such institution located in Georgia. And then on the next page on line 72 after the word has, I've inserted maintained. So it should now read, which has maintained a physical location in the state of Georgia. And then I've also inserted after Georgia for the preceding five years. And then on line 74, five years has been replaced with seven years. And then you'll notice on lines 87 through 89, there is a new definition included for STEM field program of study. And then I've added section three, which amends 20-3-412. And so all of the language in section three is new. Do we have any questions? Senator Orr, are you number nine? I am, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it, 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 can you talk about the impact of these uh, additions? What what does it do? I know you read the language, but what's what's the impact on our tuition equalization uh, grants program that has been long standing for private colleges and universities? I'm trying to understand well, how, how this language impacts our current situation. I'll answer that because I've been yeah, in great. conversation. Uh, there's it. it from the discussions, both from an appropriation standpoint and also a policy standpoint, I think there's a move to try to uh, tailor e tuition equalization grants uh, to the areas of STEM education in our state and also toward those areas that are in the high demand career initiative 
this is not fully fleshed out, uh, obviously, but it's. Uh, I think that's that's the desire that, that I've understand to be the, the desire of the Senate leadership, and this is what this bill reflects. Further question: What what uh, what's going to be the impact on the institutions and the students? Is this is this only? doing TEGs for institutions that have STEM programs, or is it, um, what's there in the, at the institution and then it's the students, that there are students at an institution that offer STEM programs and they don't, they're, they, they, they're in other fields, for example. Psychology is not a, I'm just picking that out of the air. Right. Uh, it's, not, it's not considered, I don't believe, a, a STEM, by the definition of STEM. But that institution, can offer other things, but only the institutions with STEM programs um, are going to get are going to be eligible for tuition equalization right. grants. Is that what I mean, is that the impact? I'm just trying to get a it, that is the impact. What I would like to do is on line 96. Uh, I would like to amend this substitute that it's July 1st, 2023. I think we need another legislation, another legislative session to look at this. Right. And uh, I. I think it's probably appropriate to do that at 2023. And follow-up question, I could, because the tuition equalization grants are to have the uh, have the the private institutions that educate Georgia students uh, get an infusion of state funds, just as our university system does, so that we can all have to, so so that students all across Georgia can choose private versus public, and that the private schools bear part of the load of educating our students in Georgia. So does this tie in, how does this tie in with um, a lottery funds? I don't know that not, it affects not, lottery funds. Not at all? Not at all. It's only under this section of the law that has to do with tuition equalization grants. And that's that's from the, in the general, coming from our general fund, not from... That's great. I mean, this does not affect lottery at all. So. So then how does this, what's the disparate impact with our state system, our state funded system, and these private schools? The, that means all this, this only affects the private schools, but it cuts down the number of schools that can access this, these state dollars? I don't know that it cuts down the schools. I think it cuts down the programs that are funded through, prospectively through, uh, tuition equalization grants in the future. I don't think it has anything to do with school, per se. I mean, it just, it, it focuses the spending of the funds in two weeks, it proposes the focusing the spending of the funds in the future in tuition equalization grants to, toward those areas that our workforce is so deficient in workers. I mean, I, you know, I've, ever since I've been on higher ed, I. I've heard people ask the questions and say, you know, you know, does it make good economic sense um, to to fund programs for which there are no jobs in the state of Georgia? And you, you if you having eight to ten times as many graduates in the field as you have jobs to offer in the state of Georgia, that's, that's kind of hard to explain. I think that's part of the reason we see people accumulating degrees without utilizing them because they're not marketable in the state. So. This, that's, that, I think that's the reasoning behind looking at this whole issue is to try to address the spending of state funds um, in areas that, that really build the economy. If you, if, you have, if you have degrees that are not utilized in the state, it's questionable whether the state gets any economic benefit from it. And maybe you're doing your students a disservice by encouraging them, them to take fields for which there's no employment because there's very little information. Uh, I mean, it's my opinion that there's very little information furnished to students before they declare a major as to the marketability of a particular degree. So it just makes sense to me. But uh, I, do, I do think uh, the July 1, 2022 uh, date in there is, is premature. I mean, I think we need to go through another legislative session, but I think, I think this bill uh, 
addresses the the thoughts of Senate leadership and myself uh, in the direction of what the way we look at uh, expenditure of education dollars. If you'd have a, entertain another question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, around this very table, a different committee just passed out this big mental health parity, uh, Senate, the Senate version of that, and, and we're moving it through. And that is, is that that is expected to greatly expand the need for mental health professionals, and that's not considered a STEM profession, a, I mean STEM course of study, but yet we can see that we're going to need uh, vastly increased numbers of, uh, of people in that counseling and uh, psychology and field, but this would, th this d doesn't seem to match th up with that, with that uh, mental health parity. I think, that make, I think that makes the argument why it's imperative that we stop kicking the can down the road and put the July 1, 2023 20, date on it, because by that time, the legislature will have had another session. They will have time to, to refine what the expectations are. But Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, just to clarify, first of all, I support the bill. I, I support the expansion of, uh, to STEM, nursing and STEM. Uh, we had to add a section, is that right? Section 3 was added because of the expanded areas that qualify for Is that the reason to add the additional? Well, the reason you had to add, it appears to me the reason Section 3 had to be added was because lines 87, 88, and 89 were in the bill, so right. you have to have some clarification right. as to how it would function and how would those that determination of courses be had. Right. Now, again, this does not, is it true, uh, Mr. Chairman, that this does not limit a student from taking any majors that they choose? Is that correct? That's correct. And, but it would enhance the support for those who are either in nursing or some STEM field. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. We have one person. We're on. Uh, Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator Jordan. Are you too? Okay, Senator Jordan. I think my, one of my concerns specifically is that obviously sometimes in terms of STEM field programs, it includes medicine, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so just for the good of the order, I would, especially if we're talking about nursing programs or, or health care providers or anything like with respect to that in terms of STEM, um, maybe that gets spelled out a little bit more clearly um, because STEM programs it can or cannot include medicine or the study of medicine sometimes. Right. I, I agree with you. I mean, it needs to be clearly defined, uh, and I think that's the intention of the of Section 3 in lines 107 through 109 is that that will be defined, and certainly it's not going to be a haphazard conversation that, that, take, that leads to that list. I think it needs to be a very thoughtful process. Any other questions? We have one speaker signed up, and I did not intend I did not intend to take I don't intend to take testimony on the other two bills because they've already been heard. Uh, this is the first time this bill has been heard in its uh, current uh, form. I want to call on Sean Little from Ch Ch Chamberlain Nursing School if he's uh, if she's here. If you Chairman. would identify yourself. And Hi, my name is Sean Little. I'm campus president for Chamberlain University Atlanta campus. I appreciate the time. I'll really try to be brief, but thank you for the time and opportunity. Um, I did share prior when this bill first came out, we were initially talking about nursing. And prior, when we first started these conversations, it was before COVID. And at that time, as you know, there was already a shortage that was imminent within the state. Now we've had COVID and we still don't even understand the full impact that has had to the nursing workforce. I can tell you as a nurse, a lot of us are leaving the profession because of the impact of COVID and patient care and what that's done to us. Um, we're tired, we're worn out. Sorry. Okay. 
we have students within the state that are trying to improve and trying to join this great profession. Chamberlain University is the only institution within the state that is not granted these small amounts of funds. We're the only one. We are the second top producer of nurses within the state, according to the Secretary of State Board of Nursing. They're the ones that put out these statistics. Chamberlain University is second to Emory, which is a private institution. Emory sat 403 students for their boards. We sat 360 last year. At the rate that we're going, this state is gonna be in crisis mode for its health care. We're already knocking on that door. To delay it a year, another year, two years down the road, I think it is just going to do a disservice to our patients within the state. They're already having units closing down. It was mentioned earlier that states are leaving, or nurses are leaving the state because they can go to New York and make $5,000 a week. It's, it's a challenge that we're facing. I absolutely appreciate the changes that are um, being considered for the bill, and I appreciate the support of the nursing profession within the state. I would just like to see this move forward. If there needs to be a delay, there's no telling what's going to continue happening within our health care. Is this going to have a huge impact to the number of nurses within the state? Probably not. We're one institution, but we're the second largest institution within the state, and we're the only one that doesn't have access to these. My students are minority students. They're underprivileged students. These are students that do not have opportunity necessarily within other state funded institutions. And this will afford them the opportunity to potentially go to school for a longer period to get the degree to improve not only our patient health, but their family existence as well. Um, we have students that are 25 to 35 year old single parent working 40 hours a week to try to become nurses. And they've been trying to do this even through a pandemic. We graduated 360 students in the middle of a pandemic. Our numbers are just increasing as far as people that want to be heroes within our state. And I'm asking that our state consider you know, helping those people become those heroes that they want to be. Thank you for the time. Thank you, ma'am. This time I will entertain a motion on LC 50398S. Pardon? Yes. Well, we'll, we'll go ahead and move the bill, and then I'll have, and then I'll amend the substitute. And that's that'd be the proper order of it. So I have a motion. I'll give you a motion, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. Have a motion and a second. Um, I move to amend LC 500398S on line 96. The date July 1st, 2022 will be changed to July 1st, 2023. And I move to amend that. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor of the amendment raise your hand the amendment passes uh, now we're voting on the, the substitute as amended LC 500398S as amended we will we have a motion and a second all in favor of the substitute as amended raise your hand One, two three four We have seven. All opposed. Appears to be unanimous of those voting. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate your help. We have two more bills we're going to move through. Our next bill is House Bill 1319, Representative Workheiser. Thank you, Chairman, and congratulations on many years of not just service, but great service. As a grandfather of eight, grandkids are way better than kids. <laughs> <laughs> I've got House Bill 1319. There's no changes from the subcommittee. It basically does two things. It's a uh, service council loan for two areas that this state greatly needs. One is for law enforcement at $2,000 a year for a maximum of eight, eight years, or four years for $8,000. And then one of the toughest positions, and I talked to the 
uh, Vic Reynolds, the GBI director, just this morning, um, one of the toughest positions we have filling is the medical examiners, and this is a $120,000 uh, council, service council loan up to 20,000 years per service. And just going to go ahead and put it out there. Thanks for our help from our esteemed former colleague, President um, Lynn Riley, and our uh, Natalie and, and and for their help on this. Um, the bill is correct. We do need, and I've already got conversations started with uh, appropriations. It says every two years, but we just need to align that with what the bill. But the bill is the correct version. So I would appreciate your uh, favorable consideration on this. Okay. Any discussion on the bill? This same bill has not had any changes to it that we heard last week. That is correct. Uh, we're dealing with LC 50371S. Motion by Senator Huffstetler, second by Senator Hickman. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so Appreciate much. It, Representative, who's carrying the bill for you? Senator K. Kilpatrick. Okay. The last bill on our agenda today is House Bill 1043. Representative Jasper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, just a note, I, when I was the chairman of education and then higher ed, sure enjoyed working with you. But I just wondered, what is your instrument that you're going to uh, join these young people with? Uh, <laughs> probably the... <laughs> I don't know, I might just hum along. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, do well, I know they'll enjoy it. I was just I thinking do, that. I do less harm that way. I was that's, just thinking that when they were playing. The uh, you know, thank you for y'all for being the last bill you're going to take today. This is one we heard. There's been no changes from the uh, when we present to the subcommittee. It's the Georgia Endowment for Teaching Professionals. And uh, real quickly, what it does, it allows, it puts together a commission that can go out and raise funds so that we can help TCSG by funding these high demand career teachers. There are many of them that are not paid enough. They're leaving, going into private as they should. Uh, this will just be a mechanism to allow them to raise money throughout the state with a group and then fund it back into TCSG and to their high need areas. Uh, the neat thing about it is they have to raise $100,000 before they get started. If they don't raise that, the uh, commission would sunset. And that's very simply what it is. I think it meets a need that uh, they feel and we have found that they need. And this is for those uh, skilled trades teachers at technical college system. Yes, sir. Yeah, it can even be nursing, as you've had lots of discussion today about nursing. Right. They can certainly make more out in the field or welding or any of the high tech areas. That, as a Chairman Payne and I have talked about this up there in his tech school. This bill has not changed in form since we uh, heard it in our last meeting. Any comments or questions on the bill? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Second. second. Senator Huffstetler and I think everybody's second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say, uh, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Yeah, that's a, one comment. Okay. I'm losing my composure. I came here in 2013 with Lindsey Tippins, was on the education committee with him. We got promoted to higher education now, I guess it is. I know of nobody in the legislature that works harder for public education than this senator. I really appreciate his work. Well, you're very kind, Amen. Senator. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Got on. Thank y'all so much. You're very kind. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure to serve. Uh, I've told people a lot. People ask me, well, are you going to miss the place? I said, I'm going to miss the people. 
I'm not going to miss some of the things we have to deal with, but I'm certainly going to miss the people. It's been a pleasure serving. I appreciate you attending. We're going to go ahead and adjourn because we have another committee waiting on us. Mr. Chairman, can we uh, vote on that? My, uh, 1043 did vote. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who's your Senate sponsor? Senate okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> We have continuing education for the House members. If you if you come now, we can handle it. Summer school too. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.